Hi folks, what's this? Another video in reasonably short succession to the last? Wow, things must be going well. So, uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about web browsers. I've been trying out LibreWolf as my primary browser just for a few days now. So this is sort of my initial findings and um, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to sort of uh, reflect on how it has been working for the long term. Uh, but for those of you that would like a little bit of context, we have of course been in a little bit of a web browser crisis for quite some time now with only three web rendering engines that are sort of capable of browsing the modern web. We've got Gecko, which is uh, used by Firefox. Uh, we have WebKit, which is predominantly used by uh, Safari on uh, Apple and Mac and stuff. But we do have, uh, for example, WebKit kit browsers on all platforms uh, on linux for example i think the epiphany slash gnome web browser is probably one of the most well-known web kit based browsers but there are more out there and then we have, of course have the blink engine which is most uh, notably utilized by google chrome however it is also used by microsoft edge and i always felt that that was a little bit weird considering how much web technology microsoft uses these days that it would just sort of succumb to google's rendering engine we know that google is sort of the one that sets the pace in terms of web standards these days which is abysmal but it is what it is uh, and it would have been interesting to see microsoft have a independent horse in this race considering that things like skype and uh, sharepoint and teams and all this kind of stuff use web technology that microsoft would not have a web engine in you know uh, that they're working on that they have complete control over it just seems a little bit counterintuitive to me and i'm not entirely you know may maybe it's a money issue maybe it was I, maybe there was a deal or whatever who knows what goes on uh, in the minds of these corporations but as you know we don't really have a huge amount of choice here each of these web rendering engines comes with its own baggage of course blink coming with all of the baggage of the google corporation webkit coming like webkit has a lot of baggage in regards that it is also developed by large corporations like intel and Apple and a bunch of others. Look on the Wikipedia page if you want the, the full rundown. Um, but it is very much a corporate web engine as well. And then, of course, we have Gecko, which is, you know, the Mozilla Corporation. And whereas they are definitely the best out of the bunch, eh, they don't come without their baggage as well. So LibreWolf, available on LibreWolf.net, is what you might consider a hardened version of Firefox. Now, the thing about the Gecko uh, web rendering engine, as I understand it, is that unlike WebKit and Blink, uh, Gecko is more difficult to just sort of take out as a technology and then put it into custom web engines. I would love to see a plethora of um, web browsers that are based on the Gecko engine, similar to how like things like Vivaldi and Edge and, and countless other browsers are based on on the Blink engine, and, and there are a few on the WebKit engine, like, for example, Epiphany, GNOME Web. I'm drawing a blank on more, but there, there are more. Uh, and all of these web engines have very interesting uh, roots as well. The story, Each one has a sort of a story to tell. It's kind of interesting. Um, but unfortunately, you don't see many of these spin-offs with the Gecko engine, and the ones that you do are like LibraWolf and, and Tor um, and like Pale Moon and uh, Basilisk. And they're all basically forks or um, Firefox with changes. Now, I have no complaints about the UI of Firefox. It's great. It works. It does everything that I want it to do. It takes all those boxes. It's not like Firefox in that particular department, as far as I'm concerned, is lacking. Uh, it just would be nice to have more end user choice. But so what is LibreWolf? Well, you can consider LibreWolf to be a hardened version of Firefox. So what does that mean? That means that the defaults are largely different. It means that a lot of things will not, uh, it won't play DRM uh, content out of the box. You have to go into the menus to select that. It doesn't have Firefox Sync uh, enabled out of the box. However, you can enable it. I'm not entirely sure why they've, they've disabled it. I always assumed that they considered it a security risk or they considered it a privacy risk and then they sort of disabled it as a result maybe they want it maybe it was part of the browser development philosophy to keep everything as local as possible not to have things in the cloud uh, by default or whatever but you can activate it within the menus it also doesn't allow html canvas uh, without uh, explicit permissions in fact it silently blocks that and if you find yourself having trouble with something one of the things i found uh, 
must have having trouble with was the whatsapp web app in that it kept messing up images when i was sending them over and i really didn't understand why a quick uh, search through the faqs and help files will, will quickly work it out uh, and also there is a um an icon in the corner and it's like well i probably have to enable uh, html canvas that was all fine uh, it does it silently though which is an interesting default to set um Whereas it might have been a bit more intuitive if it had a pop-up for the first time it was blocked or whatever, explaining that, but that aside, it uses DuckDuckGo as the default out-of-the-box search engine. It is, interestingly enough, available as an app image, which I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, it also has, um, it also deletes history on clothes uh, but by default. Uh, it also clears cookies on exit and things like that by default. Um, and you have to, and really what you want to do when you open up LibreWall for the first time is go through the settings one by one and work out for yourself what you think is acceptable, what you don't like. Make the choices for yourself. The the big overarching difference between LibreWolf and Firefox is the defaults. LibreWolf defaults to privacy and security, and then you opt in for what you feel safe with, whereas in a lot of cases with Firefox, it will opt into the convenience option, and it expects you, the end user, to opt out of the things that you um, would like to improve in terms of security and privacy. This isn't inherently a bad way of doing things. If you are a lay person using Firefox, if you're just a regular Joe, uh, then you just want to get on and use the internet. You're not going to be worried too much about this. The Liberal Wolf is a browser for your slightly more privacy and security conscious user. Now, that being said, we are browsing the World Wide Web after all. We are likely to be using websites like YouTube, like a banking website, like WhatsApp, for example, Twitter. Some of us probably are still on Facebook. I have to use Facebook for work and it's a complete pain in the ass, but it's just one of the things that comes with the territory, right? All of this kind of stuff. I think nowadays when you're browsing the modern web, you have to do so with the proviso that you're not really doing so in a private way. If you are looking for privacy, then the best option in that regard would be to use something like Tails OS, an amnesic uh, Linux operating system, uh, or even just the Tor browser. That, of course, heavily restricts your ability to use the modern internet, but it is private and it is anonymous, and it is very much the furthest extreme in that area. LibreWolf is something that you can use for modern web browsing in modern ways to enjoy modern conveniences where the defaults are just a little bit more on the side of caution. And that's really quite good. However, I have decided not to reactivate Firefox Sync. I have been using Firefox Sync because it's a way largely to keep all of my bookmarks synced across all of my devices. And I was talking about this on, on Mastodon a couple of days ago. Is this necessary? Is this something we want to do? Uh, a lot of the times I have a very, you know, I, I can remember the sites that I use a, a lot. Websites that I think are particularly valuable to me, they're listed on my website chrisware.wales they're useful free and open source software tools that i don't want to forget and i would like to share with other people therefore you can go to chrisware.wales click on the uh, relevant link on the page itself and you'll find a list of really good free and open source uh, tools that are available on the internet free and open source software that i recommend and use um, and that sort of in many ways acts as a personal uh, favorites page that i can access from any uh, device anywhere anyway and it's quite well curated i was sorting through my bookmarks the other day and i was really quite surprised how many no longer work because the urls have either moved or, or websites have been shut down uh, how many are just websites that i just already know off the top of my head how many of them are just like rubbish and f you know just mucking up the useful information so i kind of like really cut them all back quite a lot and um and actually decided not to sync my bookmarks across devices. Uh, my work machine is going to have my work bookmarks, my personal, like this streaming and gaming machine is going to have those kind of bookmarks. I'll back them up into a folder on my sync thing, syncing folder, um, and periodically, but I'm not going to be too upset that I'm going to have to carry all of that baggage around with me all of the time, uh, because at the end of the day, if I remember to click on it, the chances are I can remember how to get to it. Um, it does sort of, uh, it did make me think about our reliance on search engines, not necessarily just Google. DuckDuckGo is reliant, of course, on Bing, I think it is. And there are a number of search engines there, but not as many. Uh, and almost I kind of feel that we can kind of hit a crisis point similar to our web engine rendering crisis. Um, 
But there are a number of organizations out there that are trying to work out some kind of web indexing. And personally, I don't think we need great search engines. Um, just a, a diversity of them is all right. A lot of people will say, oh, well, no search engines as good as Google. But in my experience, Every search engine has its own subtle languages and ways that you use it. And I use DuckDuckGo by default. Sometimes I'll switch over to Google if necessary, but I use DuckDuckGo as, as default because I find it convenient and usable and and it just does the job I want it to do. Um, I have tried Cirques as well. Maybe I'll try it again sometime. I just sort of fell off it because in a lot of cases it's defaults and all that kind of stuff. And Cirques, Search X or whatever it's called now, it doesn't feature in one of those standard drop down menus for for what search engine to to choose in a browser. That that generally is why there's no no problem against it. Also with DuckDuckGo, for those of you that care, uh, DuckDuckGo can be used without JavaScript, as I understand it. I think there is a, I think it's like DuckDuckGo.com forward slash HTML5 or something to that effect. But anyhow, so I've decided to approach um, this with a slight slight paradigm shift. I thought I assumed that Libra Wolf would just not allow syncing, that it would just be against the browser philosophy or the development philosophy or just um, something that it will, you know, th there would have been a privacy issue. But it actually says in the FAQs, and the FAQs of Libra Wolf uh, are definitely worth reading. It says, actually, because your data is synced over to, to Firefox, there's not likely to be too much in the way of privacy and security concerns. Of course, it is up to your decision as the end user. You make that choice. You take the responsibility for making that choice. But there are like more privacy and security concerning choices that I would probably have made in this process of adopting LibreWolf as, as my main browser. So that's kind of interesting. But also, I do kind of feel that it, it sort of bundles your luggage around. Uh, I am sure many of you folks turn off uh, syncing of your internet history across devices. That just seems like <sighs> not particularly useful. And it does seem to just sort of give a massive fingerprint of data that can um that can generally be used against you i mean who wants their their, their internet history really like stored for any length of time or like a, you know available there it just seems like a lot of useless data that can really only ever be used against you but maybe that's just me maybe i'm cynical maybe i'm suspicious but um yeah it just doesn't seem like something that's necessarily useful least of all like your entire you know maybe your last week your last month or whatever and oh there's that website i remember seeing and i can search back through it to try and find it uh but fundamentally speaking i don't think that it's yeah data i want sort of synced anywhere really i guess uh passwords there's a great deal of convenience in that but i use um i use bitwarden and I'm really happy with Bitwarden. Uh, it is open source, but it does store uh, passwords online. If I weren't using Bitwarden, I'd probably be using some KeyPass uh, piece of software, maybe KeyPass, KeyPass XC or KeyPass X, or one of the other variants available also on, on Android through the F-Droid store and of course through the Google Play store and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and that maybe is potentially a little bit more secure uh, because it's not there on the internet. I would just have like local copies of it. Um, but I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to fly by the seat of my pants on that one. I'm going to allow the convenience of Bitwarden um, to to look after my passwords there. Um, but I do understand that some folks of you may uh, politely express security concerns with those types of password managers. And well, there's some legitimacy to it, but also there's some convenience to it too. So, um, so far so good. Uh, I've come across a few minor hiccups that are really only part of the like the setting up process. Uh, they're things like uh, making sure that um, like there was one time when I sort of like, you know, set myself up and then uh, a lot of my stuff that I set up deleted itself on exit and I had to select a setting here and select a setting there. So there's a little bit of this like, um, there are a few settings that are made that I'm not used to habitually it challenged a few of my old habits some of which are bad habits, I might add. Um, and that's kind of interesting. Um, but really, it is just a respin of Firefox that's a little bit more hardened. I don't think there's going to be that much difference. I tried a few versions of the, I uh, tried a few um, differently packaged uh, versions of, of um, LibreWolf. Uh, I tried the, the deb version where you add a deb repository. Uh, that worked perfectly fine on my Linux Mint machine at work. Um, I, it didn't work so well at this Debian, um, Debian stable machine here. Um, Flatpak works fine. 
Uh, but I actually ended up going with the app image. I really quite like app images. You know where you stand with app images. And um, you can, if you're willing to take a little bit of time, embed them into your uh, operating system reasonably efficiently. Uh, I set it as my standard browser. Uh, set it as my default browser, set it through, set it as my default browser in XFCE, so that I can just click this little start menu button, whisker menu button, the menu button, and then click web browser and it just fires up LibreWall for me. It's all good. I'm not syncing anything though, it's all going to be completely local data, so I get to manage it myself, and it's just one less thing that can, you know, that can jeopardize me later on uh, down the line. Um, and so far, so good. Um, Habitually speaking, it's not too bad because I'm used to Firefox, LibreWolf is just a different spin of Firefox. Um, I wouldn't, you know, like, it's not necessarily, um, I don't, I don't know if you'd necessarily achieve the same results just by going through Firefox and hardening it uh, again. Um, but, oh, for example, with LibreWolf, you don't include things like Pocket as well, which are some of those like little services that Mozilla tend to sort of push on you a little bit much. And that's a little bit where I start umming and ahhing about Mozilla. It's like, do you really have to do this kind of stuff? Mozilla's been losing quite a lot of market share lately, and it's quite worrying for a lot of us. Um, I'd like to see it stay, but i got to be honest, the next five-year plan of, of Mozilla and, and Firefox doesn't seem too rosy. It seems that they seem to be attracting a market that has no interest in Firefox. Um, you could maybe argue that Firefox could I say rebrand itself as the the techie uh browser so you know like with cars you you have uh especially in like many countries around the world particularly like for in, in america where you know most people all drive automatic cars uh you could have you could have your google chrome which might might sort of be that in the metaphor and then you've got like manual gear shift cars which might be your firefox you know something that's a little bit more granular something that's a little bit more for people that know what they're doing they're a little bit keener to learn and understand the technology that they're using firefox could fill that niche it may then only sit at the whatever it is now like the 12 percent usage ratio that's still a heck of a lot of users like if I had any kind of product, any kind of service that hit 12% of internet users, that would be considered an overwhelming success. Uh, in the web browser market, that's slightly different, I guess. But Firefox has the potential to at least secure its corner of the market uh, with some like loyal, dedicated users. And I think that it's going to struggle to do that because I think that it's going to become greedy and try and reach uh, the heights of its former glory, which I don't think it can do, at least like by trying, by seeking it. It's going to have to bide its time, wait for the perfect opportunity, wait for Google um, to slip up and then seize the moment there. Not by trying to make deals with 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 Netflix or, or you know, not by trying to make, uh, you know, like buy out smaller tech companies and embed them into their browser. Not even by trying, you know, to embed services into the browser as well. I think people quite like the idea of having a web browser that's designed to do one thing and one thing well. We've got apps and applicate, you know, and and. and all like, well, we've got apps for doing things in a specialist way. Uh, Firefox, hello, eh, that didn't really go anywhere. Pocket doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Um, the only one thing, well, the RSS reader was was pretty good, but they got rid of that. Also, the thing they got rid of, I think, is the screenshot tool. Again, really useful. Use that loads. It's not that it can't be replaced on Linux, but it was just great that it fit within web elements really neatly. So there we go. Anyway, so far so good on the LibreWolf front. It seems really quite nice. Am I going to recommend that you guys go out and ditch Firefox for LibreWolf? I don't know. Like uh, in terms of day-to-day -day practicality, you probably wouldn't notice too much of a difference. If you are a little bit, if you just want to take that little bit of an extra stride in perhaps supporting the code base of Gecko and Firefox without necessarily endorsing all of the uh, antics that, uh, that Mozilla are up to, maybe LibreWolf might be a good uh, example of that. Uh, in fact, using LibreWolf is 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 a good way to say, look, we like the technology of Firefox. We just don't necessarily like what Mozilla as a corporation are doing. You know, I as an you know personally, I respect the hell out of the developers of Firefox. And when I see the corporate goons just messing it up, it breaks my heart. It really, really does because there is an absolute. Uh, you know, wealth of, of talent and experience. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the best programmers in the world are working on Firefox right now. And that work seems to be being undermined by bringing in things like Pocket and Mr. Robot promos and nonsense like that. Like, it's 
it's it's heartbreaking and i think that liberal wolf is a constructive criticism to that corporate nonsense that mozilla have found themselves in you know i think they think they're in a, some kind of horse race where they're trying to you know out corporate google which is just not going to work google became google because it broke away from the corporate uh you know the the, the corporate sort of status quo of the day which was of course microsoft and microsoft of course embraced their status quo and they've got you know distinct markets that somewhat overlap i think mozilla and firefox are in a little bit of an identity crisis right now and i hope they can pull themselves out of it um i like libra wolf it's good it seems to have uh, a kind like a, like a good spirit of free software behind it and i really kind of like that um check it out if you are so inclined uh, the app image is really good just download the app image you've got then you've got you don't have to worry about it fitting into your package manager or anything like that you just download the app image make it an executable run it see how you get on with it it's really quite nice maybe use it as a secondary browser maybe if you do youtube stuff use it as the browser to do screen caps with so that it's just you know com you know completely contains all of your online stuff who knows um i think it has a good value uh, I like to see web browsers uh, in app images as well. That's kind of nice. You can also get it on Flathub, um, and you can yeah, you can get it for like uh, all of the main uh, distributions in their own way. So I think that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And uh, until next time, uh, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Doodle. -doo.